What's up, y'all? To everybody, man. To everybody, what's up? I'm from Brooklyn, born in Brooklyn, raised in Queens. Okay. And um, where I've been, man, I just been chilling, man. To be honest with you, <laughs> okay. I, I've been I've been enjoying. Or I went on a tour, and I toured everywhere I loved, okay. everywhere that I really loved, and I just start knowing myself, getting to know myself. You know what I'm saying? And I knew the next time I stepped into a studio, it's going to be my masterpiece of work. Okay. One of the things we want to try to do today, though, is to sort of go back to when you started, just get an understanding of, you know, the early days, how you got your name, mm -hmm. um, how it was like being on um, a label like Uptown, which had, which was the modern day um, Motown, had all these amazing acts and you had to compete to get yourself out there. So anyway, let's go from the beginning. So I know you're from, I would assume you're from New York, but what parts? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. okay. Father MC, what's up, y'all? To everybody, man. To everybody, what's up? I'm from Brooklyn, born in Brooklyn, raised in Queens. Okay. And um, where I've been, man, I've just been chilling, man, to be honest with you. <laughs> okay. I, I've, been, I've been enjoying, or I went on a tour, and I toured everywhere I loved, okay. everywhere that I really loved. And I just start knowing myself, getting to know myself. You know what I'm saying? And I knew the next time I stepped into a studio, it's going to be my masterpiece of work. Okay. It's going to be the work that, you know, let's say like, like treat them like you want to be treated. Or, I'll do for you. A one night stand. Everything's going to be all right. Lisa Baby, Affection, 69, all in one album. Wow. All of those records and songs were one album, two album, three album. Yeah. And I think I'm, I've done it with this new album coming out. It's called Black Disney. Yeah. And, um, I, I just wanted to go to different parts of the world and, and visit. I wanted to go to different cities and states that I've been in, like London, for instance, yeah. when I did the Hippodrome in London okay. and when I did Wembley Arena in London. You know, it was like, holy shit, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> like, it wasn't that I was for the MC. I was yeah. like, Michael Jackson was on this stage. <laughs> like, yeah. Elvis Presley was on this stage. Yeah. So it was, a, it was a shell shock. You know, even like Madison Square Garden in New York, the young in Japan. You know, I, 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 I've recorded on some of the biggest platforms that anyone can do. Yeah. And to receive the love from overseas, you know, was enormous. I received the love in, in the States, and I knew that was coming, but... I really was looking forward to seeing, because I heard so much about like London, for a sake. I heard so much about London will boo you and do everything if they don't like you, right? I get to London and London loved me. They embraced yeah. me so much. Yeah. But I did see the rough side of London when, when I was in London, we was on tour of me, Mary J. Blige and Jodeci. And I see how they, they held the doors like Mary couldn't get out for two hours because, <laughs> yeah. you know, they were pissed off, but they love her now. Yeah. But I'm just saying, so I seen that side and I was like, wow, this is crazy. But it was better for me because all of the girls came to the hotel after the <laughs> <laughs> and they were stuck in there. So, you know, London was one of my favorite places. Um, Africa, you know, Senegal, Beijing, Gambia. Wow. You know, when I went there, Japan. You know, a lot of places did be just like, I can't even say I really, but I think I had the most fun was London. Okay. You know, because it reminded me of Manhattan a little bit, and it reminded me of Canada a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think what what happened is that um, the label you were in on, you know, it you know it, it was such a, an iconic label. So anything that sort of came out was, was gold. And the fact that you guys collaborated quite a bit really went down well here. But I think I wanted to get back to, so you, you, you born in Brooklyn, raised in Queens. Now, how did you, the music part of it, because as I think, you, you know, you've been known for a Grammy, you've got platinum albums and stuff. It's not everyone can do that. So how did you know that, you know, you wanted to get into music and, and, and this, being an MC, I mean, how did that come and who inspired you? 
well, you know, everything came from God for one, yeah. you know, but I was a bad kid growing up, okay. you know, and I was, I had a single, you know, raised by a single mother, you know, my father was in my life though, but okay. they just couldn't get along. So they separated. And, um, I was bad, man. I got kicked out of the district, Brooklyn, the courts, my courts. Wow. So they kicked me out. And, and my mother, they said I couldn't be in Brooklyn anymore. So my mom's had to pack up everything and move us immediately wow. to Queens. That's where I landed in Far Rockaway. And I'm going to Far Rockaway and I got a different mentality at this time because I'm a Brooklyn kid and, I, and I'm in Queens now. So I got a different mentality and, you know, I was sizing everybody up, you know, and, and then I was like, you know what, man? Rapping was a hobby, you know, playing with it. And then when I started, like, really getting into it, I was like, yo, this attention is crazy. You know, and I think I was bad in Brooklyn because I think I was searching for attention or something. You okay. know, who knows? That was when I was a kid. And um, and when I started rapping, you know, I just became popular and popular. I entered a roller skating contest after Far Rockaway got to know father. You know, where I was from in Queens. Yeah. I entered a roller skating contest. And being that I was so known in New York, I was known in Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens, Staten Island, Long Island. When I entered the contest and everybody, it was always on the radio. So everyone heard father. You know, they was called father MC. I was father MC, but not without a record deal. Yeah. Everybody showed up at this USA roller skating ring. And I won. I won the battle of the MCs. Wow. And, um... Now, it was, it was crazy. Quick, quick question though, the name though, because that's, it's, I mean, it's, it is a bold statement to say you're the father, to be father MC. So, I mean, one, it's either people would, 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 would take offense to that or, or challenge you with that. But then, I mean, how did that, the name come about and, and what was it like <laughs> in the early days? Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that because I, I received it all from everything, like, you the father of MCs, like, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, and see, I was in a smooth rapper all the time. I was that battle MC. I was that, that's how I won the USA roller skating ring. I grab a mic and let's go. Okay. You know what I'm saying? When I signed to Uptown, they changed my image because they said, we think that you, Andre Harrell, God bless him, yeah. you know, he said, um, I think you could be a star. Because to be honest, I had an album that was called It's My Turn and I'm Back before Father's Day. And Andre, it was on Uptown. And I'm excited. They invite me to dinner. I'm excited. Next thing you know, Diddy's there. Um, Bob Celestin, I believe. Kurt Whitley and Andre Harrell. And Steve Lucas. And I'm thinking like, yo, everybody's here in the record label. We're about to shoot. This. It was a straight hip-hop gangsta album. And they told me, I'm excited. And I'm saying, what's wrong? Everybody, I get to the table. Everybody all like kind of sad. I'm like, what's going on? So they said, yo, Andre said, I think we can make you a real celebrity, man. I think we can make you a household name. He said, I'm going to do one or two things. I'm going to let you do this album. Hmm. And it was called, it's my turn and I'm back. He said, I'm going to let you do this album. The single was, it's my turn. The album was, I'm back. Okay. He said, but if it don't work, I'm going to drop you. Wow. He said, now you can take... Door number two, we want to start a whole new album. You don't have to pay for the album that we recorded. I'm going to do a whole new album. We're going to do a whole new direction. And I'm going to make you the sex symbol that you are. No, but that, is, is that a change, though? Because you were, you, you, you were talking about being sort of the battle and everything, and he's talking about sex symbol. How did you take that? I, I was shocked. I was like, <laughs> at the meeting, I was like this, like, you know, but then... He said, if you don't, if you try it my way and we fail, I'll exercise the option on your contract and we'll let you do what you do. Okay. But if you don't take it and you fail, we're dropping you. So I'm thinking like, damn, I got best of both worlds. I could try it they way. You know, I was young. I was wanted to be on TV. Okay. So I was like, I'll try it they way. And trying it they way worked. But at the, the, the dinner, I'll never forget Bob Celestin, he was the attorney. He told me, he said, nigga, it's a part of my language. He said, nigga, who the fuck knows you, it's your turn and 
who the fuck you back from where, nigga? Where the fuck are you back from? I'm sitting there like this, like, oh, shit. And then it made sense. He says, do you want to have a Benz in the projects? <laughs> you could drive a Benz and have it parked outside the projects. Or you could have a Bentley and have it parked at the mansion. I said, I want the Bentley with the mansion. He said, then you're going to do it our way then. Wow. And I have no regrets. I have no regrets, man. You know, Puff, Diddy. You know, we worked on that album. We were in dance rehearsals. We was doing everything we did. And it was a total re-change, you know. And that's what I loved about Uptown and I loved about the labels. Because back then, there was homeschool. Like, it was like they were grooming artists to become stars. You know, like Uptown made stars. Yeah. Uptown didn't yeah. make, you know, these people I call record labels sometimes. They just were putting out records. Yeah. But Uptown was grooming stars. And the way that we got treated and were handled was totally different from a lot of other people, you know? But when you joined, you, you, you had Guy blowing up with their with the debut album. You had Heavy, he was making waves. What was it like for you coming on? Did you think, well, these guys are a little too R&B for me? And, 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 you know, or did you think, you know, I can learn from them? Or what was, your, what was going on for your mind then? All of the above. All of the above, man. I, I, I looked at Al B. Shaw. What really got me with Uptown is I seen Al B. Shaw when he was um, dressed regular before he blew up. Okay. They made, you know, I seen him and he was dressed regular. Around three months later, I seen Al B. Shaw after his record came out at Uptown. He had on this big coat that was incredible. <laughs> it looked like a Shirley. And I never got to ask Al. I said, yo, how much is that? How much you paid for that? <laughs> so I, I don't know. I got it in. I got it overseas in London. I think for thirty grand or something. I was like, I said, I need to be here. I need to be here. This is where I need to be. This I'm gonna call this home. And you know, seeing Guy when they came out, they took me under their wing like their little brother. These guys had the Lamborghinis driving <laughs> in Brooklyn. This is the time when we were at Brooklyn. Uptown was in Brooklyn. Okay. They're driving around like, rrr, rrr, and I'm seeing them I'm like these little young black cats yeah. doing it. And I was like, yo, I'm so, I ain't got to talk me to death. What y'all want me to do? But, oh, but then thinking about that then, who, who, were, who were the people that inspired you as, as a hip hop artist when you were coming up and, and, and the path they were taking? Big Daddy Kane. Okay. LL Cool J. Slick Rick, Dougie Fresh, you know, um, Special Ed, I mean, the Coogee Rap, DJ Polo and Coogee Rap, okay. um, Eric B and Rakim, definitely. But then that, that, those sounds that were a lot of upbeats and stuff, but you, you, you had the hard parts and, and that wasn't very common back in those days. So Because who, at the know. end of the day, when I knew that Uptown wanted to change me, I had to pay attention to every part of the demographic in the game. Okay. There were. I had to pay attention to the hardcore rappers. Yeah. I had to pay attention to, and there's no one that was in my lane. I had a clear lane. Okay. Even though Kane was a sex symbol, he was a hardcore <laughs> yeah. sex symbol, like hardcore. I came in here, Mr. Smooth, like treat me like, you know, I'm gonna treat you like you want to be treated. I came with the suit on, you know, the manners, I'm raised, baby. Ain't nothing wrong with being raised. You know what I'm saying? And I, it took to the women, and it was like I was standing up for the women. And it was a very bold statement to say, treat them like you want to be treated. Because, yeah. they, you know, other cats will say, yeah, he's a sucker, he's a sellout, or whatever the case may be. I'm not going to say the group's name, but um, I remember I was going on a tour, and, and a group said, um, man, he does that R&B shit. That R&B stuff, you know, whatever. That R&B stuff, sell out. Next year, on their album, they did the exact same thing. <laughs> the exact same thing. Wow. So, I mean, what about production-wise? What was that like? Because you, when you go back to the album that you first put out, I mean, were you using more of the hip-hop producers? And then when you're off town, said, look, for Father's Day, do do switch, awesome. total switch, total switch. No, no artist was on my album on the "It's My Turn, I'm Back" album. Okay. No art, okay. no producer, no producer. And I was working with like Set G from Ultra Magnetic. I was working with them on on the first album. They got me Mark Morales and Corey Rooney from wow. the Fat Boys. Wow, you know, 
Marky D, Prince Marky D. Yeah. He produced "Treat Him Like You Want to Be Treated" wow. and um, "I'll Do for You" with um, Mark, Mark, Mark Rooney. You know, they went on to produce Mary. They became big producers and became yeah. like, for well, Mariah Carey, Mary J, Jodeci, and this, the list goes on. Well, um, were you enjoying it though? Were you enjoying the R&B flown over it? Would you think, well, this is actually forget the money pop, but this actually isn't a bad sort of way of of um, of, of of rapping and stuff. It was it was cool. I knew my sound was different. I knew I was coming. Mm. I knew I was coming. Like on the hardcore album, I was like, I gotta compete with these cats. But yeah. I knew I had a lane that was open. Yeah. And I'll never forget when I was at Uptown, um, they had a DJ thing where they sent records to a pool, and the rec the DJs would write on this paper to the record companies how the record did on the dance floor. Mm. And I looked at or because I was just inquisitive. I wanted to know what the world was saying about me. Yeah. And I looked and it was nothing but positive and said, yo, I had to play the record eight times. I had to play this record. <laughs> it kept the crowd going and, you know, girls went nuts over it. You know, it was like, I knew I had a combination of myself, Jodeci, the production. Yeah. yeah. The promotion that was going to go behind it was going to be ridiculous. So yeah. I was ready for it, you know? But I think one of the things that I, I, a lot of people keep asking us about, especially when we look at, you know, we saw the the new edition sort of documentary. We've seen the TLC. We've seen the Bobby Brown where you, you've got a number, you've got a big hit, but then the money's not coming in. Or unlike the R&B, unlike rap, the, with the R&B side, they don't write, they weren't writing their own stuff. So they weren't even getting the royalties from that. It, does, was it hard to just, you know, You've got a label, you've got all this stuff, but to learn the business side, because I think a lot of people forget it's a business and there's sharks right. out there. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have that problem. I didn't have that problem. I, I, I didn't have the problem. I wrote every hit record that I had, I wrote every hit record. When I had writers, it was the writers, because I, I was touring over here and over there. Yeah. So, but no one wrote me a hit record. Okay. Every hit record I had, I wrote from every hit. And that every hit that I put out, I wrote. Wow. So, you know, you you could keep it going. Um, as far as with the money and everything, I never had a problem with that. I never had a problem with where is it going, where is it coming, you know. And I always said to myself, I signed this, I signed this deal, so I'm responsible for everything that takes place after. Yeah. You know? And um I I you know, I got treated fair, very fairly. I wouldn't you know, I invested well. I, I invested well. You know, that's what makes me, you know, people think that, you know, I came out with a record recently because <laughs> the way I live. Yeah. You know. Um, but you know, how, I, what, what made you different? Because it, it, it's not it's not very common. Cause you, 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 what you're saying isn't very common because a lot of people just, you know, they can get to you like the fame, the money and everything comes. And if you're not used to it, it could go quickly. But what made it different for you? How did you just think, you know, I need to be invest well, I need to be careful, I need to know that they may give me an advance, but they're gonna get it back, so I need to be careful what I'm spending. I mean, how did you learn that part? Was it your early deal that you because had? It was my early days when I got in, I knew ICM was International Creative Management Team. That was the company that would throw us on tour. Okay. So I became real close with them. So anytime I needed money or something, like a large amount of money, I'd be like, yo, you know, Mark Cheatham, Mark Siegel, they were the presidents. I was like, yo, get them, find me a tour, man. And I'm going to make a million dollars. Find me a tour. They find you a tour, put it together and see if it works for you. Yeah. All right. So you're going out for four months, father. Get prepared. So I already knew I was coming with it. And then what I do is I take a loan from them. So it would be guaranteed money because they got half of the money in. We got to pick the other half up on the road. So what I do is go to them and say, okay, I need, now you guys got me that mill. Right, now I need a loan against that mill. So they got to give it to me because I was their artist. I was working. So, and I was steady working and they couldn't refuse me because they already had half of the mill in already. The ticket was already there. So that means they had to keep working me. So okay. when I go get the loan, I'm paying back not only their 10%, I'm paying back another 10%. So now it's 20% because they're getting off of that loan mm -hmm. until it's paid back. 
So not only when I go with, to do the tour, I'll, I'll still get paid. When I come home, they still going to work me because the, until that tab is paid off. Yeah. And a lot of yeah. people didn't know there was ways to get around stuff and do stuff. You never had to, you know, I see all these TV shows where, you know, I'm broke and yeah. you got to understand one thing, man. I, 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 I've never been an artist to say I want to blame somebody because the power is in the pen. Yeah. The power is your decisions on, I want to go, you know, they see the artists and we all, and, and I blame myself too. We all are artists and we, we, we see the fame, we see the money, we see the cars, the women, the, the men, the girls see the men. Yeah. At the end of the day, the power's in the pen. We still have decision on who we're going to pick as our attorney yeah. and what we're going to do. So if we're not like, if they say like, yo, they took advantage of us. How could they take advantage of you when the paperwork is right here? And you paid this guy to be to look over your stuff. So who's at fault? Really, it's you. If you don't renegotiate, see, once I blew up, I start learning the game. So I start renegotiating whatever you guys got from me, robbed from me in the first contract. <laughs> Y'all want me back in that studio. So this is what I want. I'll tell my attorney what I want. They'll come back and they'll negotiate and negotiate and negotiate until I got what I wanted. And I wouldn't touch the studio. I didn't make it an argument with the record companies or, you know, to, to be like, you know, F that. I ain't doing, I ain't make that. It's simple. It's an understanding that needs to be understood. Yeah. I want X, Y, Z. I'm selling records. I'm keeping these lights on in this record company. Give me what I want. Yeah. And if you can't give me exactly what I want, you're going to damn near come close to it. Okay. And, and it made sense, you know? And then I think that's, because, yeah, I mean, and, and what you're saying is what I, I guess a lot of artists sort of didn't really go into. They go in and see their music videos, they're on tour, and, and they, they forget the business side and, and not write their own stuff. Like you said, I, I did look through and I saw that your big hits, that you were the main writer and stuff like that. So it's, you know, I had, and it's your team, it's your team. I had Steve Lucas was part of the management. I had Frank DeLeo, who were Michael Jackson's manager. Wow. Yeah, he yeah, was my right, manager. Yeah. With, with a cigar, right? The cigar, yeah. He was yeah. in all those movie gangster movies. Yeah, yeah, Frank yeah. Frank DeLeo was my manager. Wow. So it's, wow. it's like you got to pick who you run with to play ball and know, like, I can't get this guy off the street because the industry ain't going to really respect him, but I want to I rock with him. So I got to get somebody that they know and respect. Michael Jackson's manager came to me. I never went out looking for them. Wow. So it was a difference. And when they came looking for me, I was hands up like, yo, yeah. I told my manager, play ball, let's go. Wow. And it opened up more doors for me on a different level. Yeah. And when I say, you know, already sold pop. So they already took me pop. MCA took me pop. But... Getting with Michael, with Frank DeLeo, Michael Jackson's manager, took me over here. Wow. Like, I was already here with yeah. MCA. Yeah. Uptown, I was here, like, going good. I, had, I thought I was the best. Yeah. MCA, when I crossed over to go pop, it went here. I was like, okay. When I got with Frank DeLeo and Michael Jackson's manager, it went. Wow. Like in the, the world, like how did you keep it grounded crazy. in the midst of all this? Though, what what what's, what was the stuff that grounded you so you, you didn't sort of go over the top and think, you know, the world is mine? God. So, okay, God, you can't lose, man. When you got him on your side and you really have faith and you believe in him, you know, I'm not a preacher. And I'm not trying to preach to everybody and all of that. Yeah. But when you on that tour bus and you going through them cut them cities and them states, yeah, and you know, it's you and your crew. The only thing you go, and when they all sleep, the only person up is God in the tour bus <laughs> drop. And I used to sit back and I used to see the signs going through like Mississippi in the nighttime. Wow. KKK. I used to see, and I didn't think that existed. I was like, oh shit, please do not break down <laughs> right here. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I was like, but it, 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 was, it was talking to God, man, and, and knowing, you know, I had my mother in my ear because I okay. always call her. Yeah. You know, I was expecting a kid at that time on my first album. I was expecting my first daughter, Brittany. So it was like everything was a new experience. Becoming a father, becoming a, a platinum artist, a worldwide international star. It, it was everything. It was crazy. 
Yeah. You know they're doing a movie about us right now, yeah, right? No, you know what? I can't. I can't. I can't wait. I'm, uh, yeah, I can't. Yeah, I definitely can't wait. Wait to see all that. I think the the, the question then becomes um, because we're going to move on to to Black Disney and and stuff. But when you look back at your Uptown singles and stuff, which would you say would be your favorite of all the stuff you put out when you're on Uptown? Which one would you say you know this is number one? For me, my yeah. personal favorite. Yeah. One night stand. Okay. One night stand with me and Mary J. Blige. Nah, baby. All you want from me is one, one night, night stand. Yeah. Nah, baby. That was my favorite. That was okay. my favorite. And then, of course, I'll do for you. <laughs> freedom, freedom was my baby. Treat them like you want to be treated. It's always going to be my ultimate because it was my first. Yeah. You know, but it just got better. It just kept getting better. Then came everything's going to be all right. Then affection, I beat you, you know. Um, then sixty nine was the, the change of the game. Yeah, what happened with that? Because you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I got into, I'm a massive Teddy Riley fan. So when he produced sixty nine, I was like, oh, Teddy's on this. But you kind of change because that was your first R record. So what happened with Sex is Law that you could have? <laughs> what happened? Man, with <laughs> you know, you know, it's crazy. I wanted, I, I was growing as an artist. I was growing as an artist and. I, I still was still that cool Father MC, humble dude, but I was like, all right, Father turning into a man now. So Father's like, instead of, you know, I want to hit the booty, I want to get, get the booty. You know what I'm saying? So, so, you know, that's what you do when they take me. I couldn't write 69 at first, right? So they put me on a beach and put me with a radio and said, write whatever you come to mind. And I'm seeing all these guys having fun on the beach with chicks. And I'm sitting there with a pen and pad, and I just, <laughs> the first thing that came to my head was 69. So I just saw Mooney, I admitted, I just cycle when I'm licking, boom. It was crazy. Oh, my goodness. And yeah. then what happened with the, so did you take the lyrics and, and meet up with Ted, or how did that sort of? No, he had to, when I got to, to, to Teddy Riley's studio in Virginia, me and Butt Naked Tim Dog, he was my A&R at that album. We got there, I drove. I had just bought a brand new Benz and we drove from New York to Virginia. And um, we get up, I never forget, we pull up the Teddy's, the future, yeah. and we, we pull it in and you see a whole, you see them um, rump shaker, um, Rex in effect. Rex in effect we yeah. see them outside <laughs> and the big bodyguards and they all gambling. So now I'm a gambler. Everybody, you know, <laughs> Father MC is a gambler. I'll be in Vegas, like, that's my second home, you know? And um, I, I'm like, forget Teddy. Like, I, I got a hundred thousand. I got, let's go. Come on, who, who, <laughs> And um, we gambling at first. And then Teddy's used to people coming in and, oh, my God, Teddy. I was gambling money. Like, I'll see you in a minute, homie. I'm gambling. <laughs> I'm a New York cat. So we get into the studio when we have to sign uh, Disclosure. Oh. Like, you can't talk about what you see going on in, in, in the future, all that BS. Okay. At, at the end of the day, we got the, and me and Teddy, when it was me and him, he had all his producers. And that's when I met little Kim. Little oh. Kim was there. She was dating, she was not dating, seeing Ty Fife. Okay. Tyrone Fife. He was the producer on my with album. Teddy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And um, she was there with her mother. <laughs> and she wasn't little Kim. She wasn't little Kim at that point. Oh, and no biggie. Man, okay. No, no biggie, nothing. I, if wow. you notice, I was the first one to put her on a record. Once wow. she gets pumping, it's hard to make the hottie stop. On Sex is Law, you'll see that. But mm -hmm. um, we had her, she was moaning, and uh, doing all the moaning and all that stuff. Wow. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, um, she, I saw her, and me and her always looked at each other like, you know, we had a little thing going on in New York after that. I was at Nell's, this club where everybody used to party at. And I'm there and I'm chilling and I see her. And I said, I know that girl from somewhere, but I couldn't rem remember her. She came up to me and like, straight up, what you doing? What you doing tonight? Who you here with? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm good. You know, whoever I came with, don't worry about them. They'll get where they got to go. And, 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 and me and Kim became real close let's just put it like that we were very intimate and we was into each other and 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 and, and, and we had a good time it wasn't no you, you better not you know it was what it was 
Yeah. And we knew straight off, and it was what it was, you know. And, and me and her used to sit in my house and talk about Biggie and, and Craig Matt, God bless, used to talk about them. And Craig had flavor in your ear. I'll never forget this. And Kim was like, Biggie is coming, baby. Biggie is coming, daddy, I'm telling you. And, and, and Juicy was coming, but it wasn't in New York. Flavor in your ear was like a piece of dynamite. Yeah, like, right, oh, yeah. my God. And he getting nominated four times for a Grammy and everything. And I'm like, Craig is here, babe. It's no, I didn't see anyone. My yeah. parental didn't let me allow me to see anybody that was bigger mm. than Craig Mack. Because that single was just enormous. And Biggie, Biggie, you know, God bless Big. He came and he creeped up. But after that, that, you know, boom, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. It was over. And Kim was right. She had the faith from the beginning. Wow. Only reason I doubted, I didn't doubt Biggie's success, don't get me wrong. I doubted that I thought Craig was going to go even higher because that flavor in your ear was just incredible. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. And then when Biggie caught on fire, it was it. And that's just showed me the brilliance of Diddy, of being brilliant. Hmm. Diddy gave uh, Craig Mack the here and now. Yeah. He gave Notorious B.I.G. life. Yeah. He gave him the experience. Like, I'm showing you. I'm grooming you. Yeah. You're going to end up winning bigger than anybody. Yeah. And, he, and that's what he did. Uh, going back to 69, was, was that, did that, what, where, did, where did that record go to? That, cause you, um, did it go differently for you? Because, I mean, as I said, I was a, that was one of the because of Teddy. I remember that track really well. I remember, um, I remember getting a phone call and saying that it went platinum. And then I remember we were we were happy. We were going to Atlanta to do a party, and I don't know if I get Jimmy Love got a phone call and from some lady because you know Atlanta's the Bible Belt. Hmm. So he got a call saying that <laughs> some lady from church. A church lady said she heard 69 waiting on a son get out of school or church or something <laughs> and called the radio station and said she's banning. She's going to have a whole church go and ban the records. And I'm thinking, you know, you got 69, but you got, that's when you had, I, I want to go downtown, yeah. SWV. Yeah. You had somebody knocking the boots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Had, and I'm just saying, look, I'm horny. I admit it. I get psycho when I'm licking. I'm poking a panani. In other words, I'm sticking. You had other records like, I want to taste you. I want to get in deeper. <laughs> I want to, like, fuck you, basically. And I'm just like, I'm being subliminal about shit. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it did what it had to do, though. It did what it had to do money-wise. You know what I mean? Okay. As fame-wise, I, I was tearing down every building they was putting me in, from the Apollo. Mm -hmm. So when I did Madison Square Garden with 69, it was over. It was over. I, I ripped, I ripped the Apollo. I mean, I ripped that Madison Square too as well. I ripped them two places down. That was my home. And every time I touched that stage, I was scared of the Apollo, but right. I knew I was getting, I had no idea. I just knew I grew, probably because I grew up on the Apollo. Okay. And I seen stars get booed. Oh, yeah, Sandman, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're hard. Yeah, so I'm yeah. looking at it like, oh, shit. Every time I had to do the Apollo, I was nervous. Wow. Going to do 50,000 Madison Square Garden. All right, let's go. Let's pray. Let's get on the stage and do what we got to do. Yeah. The Apollo is the let's pray. Let's touch the stone. Yeah. Let's not miss it. <laughs> and, and, and do the same thing with Wembley. Same thing with Wembley. Yeah. Let's go. No fear. 18, 20,000, no fear, let's go. Wow. Hippodrome, same thing, let's go. I mean, coming forward now, though, because as I said, a lot of people started to wonder, you know, where, we, where, where you've been. Cause, and I guess it's, it's hard to imagine that to, to compete with every other music, you know, it, you know, there's so much out there to continually be on, on top. And so when, when we don't see anyone, any celebrity, you could be even Denzel, we haven't seen him in a movie in two years, we'll ask, where's he at? So it isn't that hard to understand people's wondering, where's Father MC? We haven't seen him, we haven't heard him. At that point, when you were, you were sort of 
touring and sort of taking a break and reevaluating stuff was there need did you feel did you miss the sort of being on stage and promoting a record and stuff or was it a, a sense of you know i need this time out right now because things happen so quickly. i didn't miss it i didn't miss it because you got to understand when you're an entertainer and you're in your successful successful entertainer you're yeah. always on stage yeah you're always on stage until you go to bed and wake up as soon as you hit that uh you're yeah. always on stage again you know um the competition, I never worried about that, to be honest, because I made records from the heart, though. Yeah, and you know, no competition, I made, it just, you know, there's, there's a lot of music coming out. I mean, it's just a lot to fall on it. Right, no, I yeah, get what you're yeah. saying. And, and you know what, I, I, I always just made records. I made records, like, to, 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 like, look, I just did this last night. Check this out. So this is you making new stuff or is it for Black Disney? This is for Black Disney on the album. Okay. You know, okay. I got, I got, you know, I got records that, that, like, did my manager send you anything? No, no. Any other, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have him send you. I'm gonna have him send you, you know, some joints, like, okay. like some joints, like, you know, I'm like, you ever saw the movie Notorious with B.I.G.? Yeah. This is how I could describe this album. I, I was in my studio, and I. I when in, in that movie Notorious, when B.I.G. was there and he was in the studio and he was playing Sky is the Limit and you know yeah. you know he was playing that record with 112 and he just was like yes laughing and enjoying it because he know he did it he know he came he's here that's how I feel about Black Disney that's so, how I feel about Black Disney. So with uh, production wise, now did you decide to go reach out to to the old 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 producers and stuff or did you decide let me do it myself or well, what did you do with production i messed with teddy i messed with a couple of other the old producers but to be honest with you i like the stuff that i've done hmm. and i'm not saying it because it's me i just like i knew subconsciously in me in my psyche i knew i wanted to go somewhere else yeah. even when i was at teddy's house and in his studio, you know, and all the other producers, I'm saying, I like it, but, you know, when I became a producer, it was like, yeah, okay. You know, like, but before I became a producer, I was like, yeah, oh, shit, oh, my yeah, God, yeah, yeah. tear that. But now as a producer, I'm like, all right, all right. And then it makes me come back to my lab and Boop, 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 and get on it and, and, and do what I do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm making beats. The beats I'm making, I make like when I know when I'm going to pause on a record yeah. or, or, or go down, I'll make the sneer go down with me. I'll yeah. make the kick go down with me or come up. You know what I mean? So, yeah. and I play with it. So when I start writing, I'll be playing with it. Okay. And I, and I, and I wrote my album like it was an instrument. Wow. You know? For some reason, this stuff is going to cut me off in a minute, and I don't know if I, if I, if we, if we, if it cuts off, if we just log back in, so I can just. Because I wanted to get a little bit more about 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 the album, um, and and I guess because a lot of people really want to get a, a sense of what you're writing about now, because back in the days it was more um, more on the relationships and more the women and stuff like that, uh, and and whether you've decided, you know, let me. A lot of has happened over the past, you know. Corona, Black Lives Matter, a lot of violence and stuff, and I don't know if that shapes your music. So, so yeah, no. So uh, regarding Black Disney, I mean, I guess one well, people want to wonder why you know Black Disney, you know why why you chose that name, and then um, what's the what's the idea about around it? Black Disney, I always thought was uh, was a um, like I love Disney, I love Disney. So what I wanted to do was. I wanted, I, I pictured Disney as black people, how I saw it, like, like a whole bunch of people. But, um, I'm sorry guys, but um, yeah, so I always pictured it to be, you know, 
a power, a, a power thing. And I just saw it in Disney World, a lot of powerful black players. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I said, well, you know, if I ever come back, I'm just going to let everything that I didn't do that I wanted to, I'm yeah. doing it now. The album, I'm still writing about the women. I'm still letting the street cats know, you know, like, yeah, let's go. I can rock with y'all. Let's go. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm just, I'm just really having fun with it, man. You know, album's not directed to anybody. It's, it's straight up having fun. Listen to it. It's gonna take you on a mood, whatever mood you in. You are gonna see it. You are gonna feel it. You I know? mean, a, a lot has changed um, since you when you when you were uptown and everyone big onto um, big with with labels. And I remember seeing. Um, Steve Starch on Breakfast say the, the Breakfast Show saying that there's no need going back to to make labels anymore, giving them twenty percent when you can stream and do all the stuff for yourself and really keep you know keep the stuff yourself. What's been your with Black Disney? Are you going independent? Are you going solo? Are you going through majors? Or what's what's your thoughts about what you're going to do? I'm I'm being courted by a lot of a lot of a lot of labels i'm being courted by a lot of independent subsidiaries and i'm 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 courting the idea of just doing it myself you know i'm dropping in september so something's getting ready to happen so we can really <laughs> figure it out <laughs> we were just it's crazy because i was on the phone uh, we, i was on the phone with like my company my company okay and you know and and we were talking about the uh the the, the tour bus the my marketing guys were talking about getting the sponsors to sponsor the tour bus so we can get on this road and go. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I'm in the process of building a house. I'm in the process of me and my lady doing a lot of, a lot of stuff. So it's crazy, you know? Wow. Are you ready to go back on the road? I mean, is, is, is it? Yeah, but like I told them earlier, I told them earlier though, it's going to be a different thing. This is a lifetime thing for them. So every dime they make, they should, they should put it in the bank. Not have fun with it like okay. they did. We're gonna do more grown and sexy stuff. We're not gonna, you know, we're gonna just ride with God and see what happens. Yeah. You know? See so what I, happens. Uh, the world uh, know how I get down though. Yeah. The yeah. world know how I get down <laughs> in and outside the US. I, I, I mean, are we, are we gonna see, because uh, the track you played was really, um, and um, yeah, it's it's a really sort of I won't say hard, but it's 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 hip hop. Um, yes, yes. But are sir. you are, are you going to stay in that lane, or are you going to try and 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 you know go back to and sort of get your R and B fans and say you know it's something for you, something you know. Oh man, listen, I got I got this joint. You know, I got. Let me see something real quick. Watch this. I'm gonna show you something. Like. And this record goes to all of the the hard, heavy core Fab MC fans. All right, check it out. You know that flow. Does it love me? Did you produce it yourself or who did you get to produce it? Me, myself. Wow. So why do you go outside then if you do, if you, right, you know. I wanted some, when I did go outside of, of, of me, I wanted something else. I was searching for something else. Okay. You know, sometimes I, I want to do, I want somebody to give me something so I can attack it. Okay. But then when, when I go to somebody else and like Jay, Jay, my management was giving me a whole bunch of funny records, like, you know, <laughs> like the retarded records to do over. And I was like, yo, what are you giving me, man? Like, it was crazy. It was, it was nuts. So I said, yo. And then our homegirl, Patricia, 
she was giving me records in the middle of the night. And I was like, okay, I know what I got to do. I know what I got to do. <laughs> but we came, we came with a lot of great, a lot. Of, that's what I'm saying. Like the journey of Black Disney was just, it, it's, a com- it's, it's, it's accompanied by a lot of people. A lot of people, ideas, I'm not a what I say go type of dude, you know, unless I'm firm on it. Yeah. But um, it's accompanied by a lot of people, you know, and a lot of people I listen as much as they think, my company don't think I listen, but <laughs> as much as they think I don't listen, I do. And when I do, I go back. And, and I'm the hardest critic on me, myself, and I. So when I'm listening to my album, I'm like, yeah this needs a new verse or I need to flip this before it's done. It could be mastered. And I'll say, I'll go and write the first half and say, I don't like that on the first half and go make it a whole nother first half and then have my engineer come and mix this record back. You know? So it's a lot of, you know, before I had other producers doing all of that. So I learned from the best as I learned and, and my administration and the attention that everyone else gave this album made this album what it is. I can't sit down and say, I wholeheartedly did this by myself. Yeah. You know, well, I really could, but. You know. <laughs> well, <laughs> did, did, were there any of your old old friends from back in the day, hip hop friends that you wanted to collaborate with and, and bring I on board? I did, but I didn't. I did, but I didn't. We still got Mary in the loop. You know, I was getting ready to do a record with Case, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> You know, um, that's some retarded shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I mean, um, yeah, well, man. Well, well, like hip hops, because you mentioned Kane and and um, Rakim and stuff. I mean, any of those those sort of hip hop guys that you wanted to have spit a verse on your on your album? You know what? I, I, the only one that I'm going to, and I'm going to remember Fat Doug. He was signed to Uptown for a quick second. Okay. But he he the one who rapped on um, "Come and Talk to Me." Okay. Yes. I went. I uh, I mean, Fat Doug have been talking, and I just got to get the record to him, and, and 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 doing that, you know, and a lot of a, a lot of other cats. But it's like I want the records to mean something when you come on my record. Yeah. You know, I want the records to to be about like, okay, okay, you know. I'm looking for a female. I'm looking for a female rapper that I want to put on my album and close the door on the album. Um, but, but she got to be fly. She got to be fly. Out, it's coming out next month. Are you still still? I thought you were coming. It's releasing next month. <laughs> <She's retarded. laughs> um, yeah. No. No. Absolutely. We're gonna drop the single. We're gonna drop oh. the single. Oh, the we single. We definitely dropping the, the single. Yeah, we're definitely, you know, the album's not coming until, like, the beginning of December. Oh, okay. you know, okay. We're shooting the video. We were talking about on our conference, we're shooting video, and we're taking a photo shoot. And, you know, I have a podcast. It's called, it's coming out. It's called Uptown Beyond, okay. you know, and it's me and Jimmy Jenkins, Jimmy Love. He was the president of Uptown. Yeah. And um, yeah. we're interviewing all of the Uptown, even before I got to Uptown, like Vanessa and Quest. You know, everybody, Heavy D's brother, everyone, from them to Naomi Campbell to Mary to Puff. I mean, everybody, wow. you know, and then we're going beyond. We're going beyond. That's when Dre moved to California. And then he started messing with, like, his his movie star friends. <laughs> so, and we're, we're doing that right now. We're in our ninth episode. And we're, you know, we're being sponsored and stuff like that. So that's going to be really huge. That's going to be really, really huge. Um, it's called Uptown Beyond. And we're, put, we're putting a lot, we got a lot of things that's going on that, you know, the movie Uptown, yeah. you know, is coming out this year, next year. It's yeah. coming out, but they're in process of doing everything right now to get it prepared. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see how that turns out. Yeah, you know what's what is what is amazing. Um, just as as we're wrapping up, is the fact that I'm, you know, when we see you, the stage version of you, you know, the the the, the rapping part, you, you we don't 
see the business side of the things. I mean, I think, that, and that's one of the things that a lot of us, we just see on stage, you buy albums, but not realize that there's a businessman there. You know, he's, you've got all this stuff in place. And I think that's where people start wondering if we don't see you perform or, or release his stuff, the stuff is, is going bad. We're not realizing that, you know, you've got stuff in place. I remember seeing Master P talking about, you know, he, he, you know, things aren't even bigger than before. You know, you don't need to pull out a record to make money, but you could you invest in all this stuff. And 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 hearing what you're saying about all these different projects, I guess, you know, and I and I guess I never got to point where did I come from because, you know, you spoke about Brooklyn being, you know, getting into tr trouble and stuff like that, moving to sort of Queens, but learning the the business side of stuff. Uptown, I mean, uptown, oh. uptown. I, I work with the best of them, from Russell Simmons, Clive Davis, you know, um, Chris Lighty, God bless, um, Andre Harrell, my mentor, everything to me, to, to just learning, like Mona Scott Violators with Chris, um, Puff, Diddy, Jay-Z, Dame Dash, all of them. I was but you're around. watching that and was, learning. I was watching, even Teddy Riley, watching him in the studio, watching how they did it, because I knew I never was a yes man, and I never was a... Uh, uh, to do, I always wanted to do it myself as well, and um, learning it was 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 my pleasure. It was like I can, I love giving things life. Like if you notice, everybody I put on my albums all made it. Yeah, everyone. Mary J. Blige still relevant to this day. Yeah. Josie KC just put out his record. Yeah, yeah. Last week, yeah. you know, um, you got who else? Um, Horace Brown. You got. Um, oh man, um, Dave Hollister, Dave. huh? Yeah, Dave, Dave Hollister, Hollister. Yeah. Yeah, Dave Hollister. Hollister. He sung on my album, Lisa yeah. Baby. You know, um, intro. I was the first one to put them on, um, close to you. Yeah, that was gonna, those, uh, yeah, that, that was a, that's a different, all different. I mean, Anthony level. Hamilton, I mean, wow. the list goes on, Crystal Johnson. I mean, the, the list goes on. I always was like, yeah, let's give them a shot. Now, I'm not saying that they blew up because of me, yeah. But hey, if you write time, if you go back in time, you know, Mary J was on Jeff Red's record. Hmm. And nothing happened with that. And then she jumps on Father MC record and phew, she's out of here. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Same thing yeah. with Joe Dizzy. Yeah. Out of here. So I don't know if I got the Midas touch or I'm just that dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But well, the thing that made me, yeah. the thing that made me besides Uptown and God, of course, yeah. is the fans, man. The fans. Because yeah. I tell people, and I say this, and I mean this so cold-hearted, without them really supporting, none of us would be nowhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, it's not about the dough. It's about the learning, the experience, because yeah. it's more fun. The dough is dope. Let's yeah. not get it twisted. <laughs> I love the gamble. Yeah. So the dough is right. But when the fans, when you really tell, you know how many people come to me and say, yo, I heard I, I made my kids off of you. I'm like, is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, you know what I mean? And I think I done made some last week, so. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, last I question I last question I have, and I always ask this to my guests, is that if you were so stuck in an elevator for a couple of hours and they say, we could go to a movie for you to watch, what would you put on? What would you want to watch if you were stuck for three hours and you could watch a movie? That is a dope question, yo. <laughs> That's crazy because you know what I love? I love, and it, 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 I got a few, but, oh, shit. Damn, um, Meet Joe Black. Okay. Meet Joe Black. Wow. That's crazy. The Brad Pitt one. The Brad Pitt joint. Wow. Okay. Meet Joe Black is crazy. I mean, every time, I love Ghost. I love Ghost with Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. You know, but me, I love the, the Black films, too, like, you know, Which Way is Up and stuff like that. But yeah. the ultimate is Meet Joe Black. Because wow. it tells you a lot subliminally. Wow. Like, you know what I mean? And then you think, I thought Neat Joe Black was the devil was fucking this guy up, man. <laughs> and if you look at it, how he started getting his heart, and was like, boom. And then somebody talking to you, scary. I'm like, the devil coming for this dude. <laughs> and it was God's angel. It was his boy. Yeah, and yeah. when he was at dinner, and he said, somebody said, I'm here. <laughs> oh, you're not going to invite me for dinner? I mean, <laughs> it's so crazy. I tell, I tell Jay all the time, he got to sit. You got to have patience for that. But yeah. when it hit, it got you, 
Wow. Did, you, did you see when he was in the hospital and he said, um, the, the Jamaican lady said, oh my God, phobia. And he says, me not, me not phobia lady, me the good guy. She said, then what you do here? <laughs> said, oh, shit. My you goodness. Know, you know, so that's you your know, movie. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I want to go to that place. I, I love, and I love that lady, that the Jamaican lady. I just fell in love with her spirit. Wow. You know, it, you know, man. <laughs> that's you know, it's, okay. It's, sometimes you gotta, sometimes you gotta write all your wrongs to make one right. Mm. You know what I mean? And you gotta, you gotta say to yourself, we in our third, I always say this, and you can take it because I know you're gonna steal it from me anyway. <laughs> okay. I always say life is like a dollar bill. And you have four quarters. We're in our third quarter right now. Okay. We're living in our third quarter. The next quarter is, you know, you know, whatever you yeah. make of it. But we done had our fun, so now it's time to really have fun. Okay. It's not time to 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 to, to not enjoy one another as humans. Yeah. You know, I tell people all the time, travel, man, enjoy yourself. Like, get out there, go see the world. I was fortunate that I could, yeah. and I was fortunate that I could take 15 people that never would have saw outside of Queens. Wow. You know? And and, and that was God. Yeah. And, and, and for you guys, like for you guys, when I saw you guys say, out of six months, you had all of these artists, and I was the most... What did you say? I was. Yeah, I mean, mo most likes and comments, which was surprised. As I said, you, um, this was New Jack Swing Classic, and and yours was the one that everyone was like, "Oh, I love this joint," and everything like that. And and I was really surprised by it because it wasn't it wasn't the the, the most popular of your tracks, but they still connected with it. So yeah. Yeah, because I used to when I was on tour, I used to always like I never was the let me rush to the room. I get out there and talk to people. I remember in London, me and KC was on the tour bus, and there was these three girls, beautiful girls too. And we're, we're like, let's see who they waiting for. <laughs> now, KC put on his hat and everything, and he walks out with Mook, his bodyguard, and the girls were like, ah, KC! <laughs> so I'm like, okay, he won. He's in the, in the, in the hotel now. They still waiting. Oh my God, Father MC! I was like, <laughs> You know, I had to do my little LL half Big Daddy Kane, lick my lips a little bit. I, I like you know, and then they, <laughs> and, and then you know they came with me, and you know we hung out and wild out. But you know, London, I always say London, I had a blast because it was like I was Father MC, but I was one of them. And the same, I'd come downstairs at the hotel. And my bodyguards used to get so mad at my management team because I'd be talking, sitting with the people. Okay. And I think they, they understood me more personally. You know, and it's funny when you get to really sit and chill. I'm in the lobby with my PJs on and some Timberlands and I got a cigar and a robe and I'm talking to y'all and kicking it. And all you hear is, I can't believe he's here with us. Like, I can't believe. <laughs> you know, it, I'm here. I'm y'all. I'm here because of y'all. Oh my goodness. Hello? Yeah, this is yeah. the first time I ever had an a, a interview of Speechless. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no sorry about that. <laughs> no, I, I, you know the final thing, because you, you're in the alien and you picked Miss Meet Joe Black. If you had a song, because they're, they're about to put the movie on in the cassette, and they say, okay, what song could we play while, before this movie comes on? What would you pick? Any song, any artist? Bob Marley. Rastaman, vibration, yeah, <laughs> okay. that's my joint. Oh, my mom, I don't, I don't listen to a lot of hip hop, man. I don't listen to a lot. I listen to vibe music, where it could take my brain somewhere totally left field, man. You know, I'm into the music, so I do all that music. I don't do Caribbean, like Jamaican, you know, and and I love it because my mom used to listen to it as we were growing up when she cleaned the house yeah. and burned her incense. So. Everything that I was raised on, I end up loving at the end of the day, you know? Wow. But yeah, Bob Marley, Lenny Williams, Lenny Williams, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, like, get me, take me somewhere else. Yeah. You know, like, sing panties off of cheeks. <laughs> you know what, I have to appreciate um, both yourself and Jay for 
for for giving us this opportunity to to hear from you and and I guess it's it's you know that's if I'm taking anything from this I guess one is is what I hope a lot of other aspiring artists would do is to is to understand it's a business you're getting into it's not just to be famous but it's about a business it's about a, a long longevity it's about um creating wealth for yourself and your family and, and stuff like that um because it seems as if based on what i'm hearing and the way i'm seeing you is that you're in a place where you can do an album <clears throat> not because you need to pay your bills but because you're not absolute music and, and and i think that's it's like going for a job interview not because you need the job because you've already got two other jobs but it's because you know what, if they don't give me that's not a big deal and that's it seems if music wise it 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 will be much richer because you're not forcing it and stuff so, so it's been you know you know people used to ask me like when you coming out with another record and i used to always be like stumbled like uh you know <laughs> i'm thinking about but i always said to myself when god gave me the cue to do it yeah. It was time to go. Yeah. And he gave me that cue. He gave me that sign. Like, I kid you not, I was laying down one day and I have studios. I have recording studios. So he just told me, he's like, you ready? I kid you not. And I was wow. like, really? And I just heard it. Let's go. It's time to wow. go. And then wow. my first one is, um, I, I had a record when I started the album. It was called, um, Even Though I Walked Through the Valley of Death. And it was like, cause I'm talking, I'm like talking to God, like I'm ready. And that wasn't, it's not even on my album, but it was like me giving me confirmation. Why would I do that record first? Wow. You know, and it was hard to, even though I walk through the valley of death, I fear no eat. Lord, please forgive me. Oh my God, that record is crazy. Oh, I, I just don't want it on my album because it'll be controversial. It's crazy. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll have Jay get that to you too, man. You know? Wow. So I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, as I said, listening to all this stuff, though. I mean, how long have you? Had, when did you start working on Black uh, Disney? When did you get in the studio and say, "Okay, God, I've listened to you." Two months, two months, three months. Oh, that's not long, guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, two, three months. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I did. Um, let me see something real quick. Let me see, uh, let me see that. Let me see if I got it here. Uh, um, oh, check this out real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know I had to do this. school this was the track so i know that if you if it came out you've got a generation of people that would say they remember the the, the original track and just but i mean that this this doesn't sound like something you just did over two months this looks as if you went in and got timberland to come in and they got pharrell and like they're putting them thank two you, or thank three million so millions to, no but it's that's I mean, just that, work that's that's that's, that's just the, work that's a that's some hit though that's that's thank you thank you it's yeah. just work, man. Me and my squad, we work. We talk. Next thing you know, we talk. It's time for me to go to work. Once I talk, I get the whole squad together, my shorty, and we, we listen. I listen to what they're saying, 
And then next thing you know, before they know it, I'm emailing them the song. And they like, wow. So they got used to it. They got used to just getting the records. Like once I, I call my engineer, my engineer is J. Cole's engineer as well. Wow. You know, and, um, his, you know, his sister is Issa Rae. She just got nominated for um, eight em Emmys, eight wow. Emmys, you know, wow. God bless and good luck with that. But, um, you know, Animal, he's, he, he, he loves the studio. He, he loves the, you know, he mixed and mastered my album, you know, and um, when I call him and say, come on, it's go time, it's go time. Yeah, I mean, I mean but I'm listening to that, I'm thinking, okay, I can see why people, the majors are bidding for it, because that's, that, but, but that, I mean, cause that's, that's a single, that's a, that's, I mean, it's almost like if, if, if it's marketed right, it could just go, it can just go international kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's the pressure that, that, <laughs> that you have when you've come out with that stuff, and it's like, how do you, you know, even if you just released it on your own, it would just pick up and take, and take win. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, people are going to be saying, where's he been all this time? And all of a sudden you're just going to be hitting it out like that. Wow. So, but that's very different from the one that you, you played earlier, which was a little bit, see, yeah. in New York. Oh, yeah. this one, this one is more of a, okay. This was, this one is, you know, people, I, I can't remember her name now. The, 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 um, the rapper with, um, um, Puerto Rican, I uh, can't remember her name. Her name escapes me, but it's on that sort of. It's a, yeah, it's a massive track, but um, yeah, I can't, I, I can't wait to see how how you pull it off with. Uh, Check this out. Check this out. <laughs> yeah. Cause I want to, never will I have to But you know I'm the shit, the shit, the shit I'm the cat that they wanna be around homies Cause you know I'm the shit, the shit, the shit It's not the end cause I want to, never will I have to But you know I'm the shit, the shit, the shit I'm the cat that they wanna be around homies Cause you know I'm the shit, the shit It's in New York, you know I'm in the building for sure All these chickens sound premature Trapping ass niggas and insecure I'm on that big control I think the, 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 the you know Jay's got a, a big hand on how to try and get this out and stuff. So it's it's um yeah no it's as I said it's, make sure you get some some joints though definitely. Yeah, I mean, but it's and as I said, it's as a music connoisseur listening to stuff like that. I mean, sometimes you need to hear stuff in once and know well is this going to make it and stuff. And you, you know, with the set it off one. You, you play it because people haven't heard a track in such a long time so when it comes out it's like oh goodness that track what's going on so it means like the right video and the, you know the right, right. Sort of vibe that gets everybody feeling like you know you know even white folks in a video not to oh yeah yeah it crosses oh, over that's what i said I, you know it's funny you said that because i told um everybody on my phone my conference this morning i said um we need some we need some, i want some dark skinned black dark beautiful women yeah. I want like a Chinese, an Asian, yeah, yeah, and I want a couple of white girls, yeah, and, and, and some Puerto Ricans, you know, like 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 got everything. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah, make it very multicultural and, and um but even getting old folks in it too. Yeah. To well, like, this, oh, is the I remember this is this song is I'm gonna have check it out. Hold on. Something if I don't get it, she ain't getting nothing. Now she's born again, but me, 
I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, I think it's a, it's amazing. The problem that you have is the fact that you've got a lot of big hits and, and you know, people are doing singles. And, and I just wonder if, you, if you're if you going to do singles first. But, it, yeah, I mean, people are going to be surprised and say he's been away all this time and look what he's come up with. It's 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 a mixed bag. And and I just hope the marketing and promotion is is right because the music will start right. itself, but it's, you I, hopefully you can it can cross over to to the not because you want to get to the pop artist but you want people to listen to good stuff you want people you want people and and, and you know i want my I, I don't make music just for one you know what yeah. i mean i make music for the world it's yeah. my artistry yeah you know picasso didn't paint just to paint for white people yeah you know but, but, yeah but i know that set it up too i got a picasso in my house <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, it, it's crazy, like how people put a stand on something and then yeah. they expect the world to say, "Yeah, I'm yeah. sticking to that." Man, listen, man, I've never no. been a follower. I make music for the world to enjoy. I love when I go to London, Japan, Europe, yeah. Germany, Australia, and just to see the people. Sometimes I remember I walked on the Wembley Arena. I never forget this, and I just walked out on the mic, real cool though. Yeah. And I just looked at everybody like, damn. And it, I had to soak it up like, damn, I did this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, damn, I did this. You know? Yeah. And I did it with the help of a team. Yeah. With Uptown. Yeah. I did it with MCA. I did it with a team. Yeah. As long as you have the team that understand what you're doing, because you're yeah. the artist, then everything else, if they understand and move like you move, and knowing, I can't take this back to Fargo. Yeah. I can't take this. This girl is going to look at me like I'm crazy. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I do hope that the Set It Off one be, to becomes a, a <laughs> that, that, that is that is very multicultural yeah. stuff. Old and, old and young. And, and, it, and it's because it, 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 it sort of at least let everyone, because I said there's a generation of people that will hear the track and says, oh, my goodness, I remember that track. And, and it will just connect to it. So, I mean, I, I, yeah, that's to me, that's, you know, that's, that's that's a massive hit, but you know I want I want to thank you definitely for the time for you know Jay for setting this up, but for you for taking the time to to to, to talk a lot. I mean uh, about the business, the the journey, the the, the music. I mean it's this um, it's it's it's. But I mean I take a, a it's very inspiring to hear that even though we don't see you guys. It doesn't mean that you guys aren't making moves and 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 really you know and listening to the stuff you're putting out there doesn't it doesn't seem to make sense because you know you've been it doesn't make sense how good it is and how hot it is um because it's like what you know you don't expect that and these are some really hit ones as i said big big hits and and uh, thank you i appreciate it yes yeah, so anybody I'm, that want to get in touch with me they can get in touch with me um at for the at the real father mc at the real father MC, 
Facebook, you know, Timothy Brown, but at The Real Father MC, you know, and I'm going to come back on your show, you know, halftime check. You know, I got to shout y'all out. Let's <laughs> talk. And we're going to have, next time, I'm going to have you set it up where you're going to take calls from the listeners. Definitely. And, and you know, I want to teach women around the world, you know, not teach them, but share the experiences of, you know, how to make a shape. It's <laughs> <Okay. laughs> a personal joke. It's a joke. Okay, okay. I was like, but yeah. <laughs> anytime you need me, I'm here, man. You just get okay. that chair. I'm, I'm rocking with you. Will do. I mean, I'd like I, to say thank you, man, for interviewing and, and thanks for everything. For real. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been an honor and listening to the stuff. You know, I'm not even going to be able to get the song off my head. Says to step it off because it's like it. I I went right back to high school and like, oh man, I joined so. As I, said, I wouldn't I, be surprised I, if Jay don't have that at you already. <laughs> it's in his inbox. All the records are in his inbox. Okay, okay. There you but go. I, see, I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to be in the top. I wanted to be, you know, Billboard's number one, and I think it will be. Right, Mark. Thank you. It's I funny because think... Billboard just called us. <laughs> That's crazy. Because <laughs> I'm putting it out on my Instagram like snippets. Yeah, a and snippet. they're calling like, "Yo, when are you going to drop so we can start charting these records, man? What's yeah. going on?" I'm like, I think that would is... that that would definitely that that would definitely. So, but anyway, I, I do thank you, and um, but I yeah, but I will I will definitely um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm blessed and honored from listening, hearing, and learning and stuff like that. And I look forward to the Uptown and Beyond podcast. And of course, yes. we're going to be waiting for the miniseries and stuff like that. But um, but uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, thanks, thanks a great deal, for MC. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> All right, man. All right, take, take it easy, bro. All right. All right. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of the Half Time Chat community. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, but most importantly, why don't you consider being a member? As a way of supporting the channel but also getting a lot of videos ahead of time, a lot of behind the scenes stuff and some exclusive content that doesn't get shared. But anyway, thanks for watching and thanks for being part of Halftime Chat. Sweet.